and it's a really good location. Um, I harvested a very mature four-year-old a few years back, and last. Um, so the point is, you don't need an excavator to do this stuff, as you're going to see. Most of you have already done it, but if you're looking at doing it, you can do it with hand tools if you have to. All right, <clears throat> today's a work day with Phil. September 14th, I'm running up to the front to uh, grab the excavator. We were supposed to dig the water line last weekend, but once again, rain one day and something else the other day. So let's grab the excavator. We got a whole chore list of stuff to do on land today. Food plotting, deer standing. Uh, turkeys in my food plot. Imagine that. Throw this on the trailer, let it warm up while I'm hauling it back to to back the property. All right, man, we might be breaking Phil's truck in. Logistically, we were bouncing around, and uh, he's gonna take that all the way out into the field, risk a new scratch on it. To take this deer blind and the deer tower out there. This ought to be interesting. Right, Phil? Yeah. I won't charge extra for new scratches. <laughs> yeah, I didn't figure that into the bill. <laughs> All right, we came up. Came up with our game plan. Uh, we're gonna start with this new deer tower first because everything's wet. We're gonna mow off the overgrown clover plots. Ah, who's calling? Oh, that's Phil. What's up? Hey, I just thought of a better alternative before you go. What? Let's, let's load both the, so we don't have to make two trips with the blind. Let's put the sand and the blind on my trailer, and I'll run them out and offload them, and then come back and get the, the skid steer to pick up the blind. Okay, we'll try it. I think that would save a lot of time both ways. All right. Okay. Yep. some logistical issues trying to get the best most effective method so we ended up just uh, throwing the tower and the uh, blind on Phil's truck and trailer so hopefully you don't get any scratches but it might be broken in now and it's starting to get hot unfortunately the food plots are looking real good except we're we're gonna have hot and sunny now for they're predicting at least a week which is not going to be good for them. to our spot. This is where the uh, bail blind was. See the chair still there. All right, so my first uh, mission here to get this blind in place is I got a make a little clearing in the edge of the woods. This is on our southeast corner of the property, 
and it's a really good location. Um, I harvested a very mature four-year-old a few years back, and last year I had a lot of intel in this spot. But if you look at the aerial, it's a kind of a pinch point. It's the narrowest point of this whole very long north and south field. So that's why I'm going to tuck it in here, and also because of the terrain. It's it's downhill to the south of this blind and it's downhill to the east so thermal evening thermals are going to go back into the woods and i created the food plot specifically for that setup which at some point you're going to see here how i laid the food plot out camera on him in time he started bird dogging going back and forth there he must have smelled a bird back in here he got all excited So both Phil and I came from the exact same place where all of you guys came from. When we started this, we started with hand tools, and then we worked up to an ATV, and then we worked up to a tractor and so forth. Um, so the point is you don't need an excavator to do this stuff, as you're going to see. Most of you have already done it, but if you're looking at doing it, you can do it with hand tools if you have to, with shovels and chainsaws and rakes. Uh, but since we have done this for a number of years, it is nice to have the bigger machines because we could just do it a lot faster. Really, that's the main advantage. So it's really nice having the excavator, especially in hilly terrain. I mean, this there's literally probably a four to five foot drop off here from where I'm cutting this uh, level pad. I mean, it's a minimum of a three, three and a half foot drop off just in the 12 foot span or 14 or 15 that I'm going to put this blind. So anyways, just food for thought. We started where all of you guys did. So let's get back into the field and get some fresh air. Thanks. <laughs>
I say we take, we try it. All right, so uh, we eyeballed it. <clears throat> so we're gonna be a little bit off, but we're gonna put the tower in and see how it sits. I mean, it felt halfway okay in the excavator, but we know how that can be, so. This is gonna be a cool spot. We're gonna tuck it up into the cedar. Probably just cut out a few branches so you're right on the edge here. Yeah, and it's gonna be in the shade now. If we can get it far enough over, yeah, it's gonna be nice. Nice. So for the guys that have done this quite a bit, this is kind of old hat, but if you're new to this, if you're new to setting up your land and setting up deer towers, you really should think things out a lot more than just like plopping a tower somewhere on a food plot or a trail or something. I consider um, wind direction, of course, all the time, but not only that, the evening and the morning thermals, especially in hill country, because in the morning, your air goes upwards as the day gets warmer, and in the evening, your air goes downhill as the day gets cooler. So I factor in the thermals and even the food plot. So this particular food plot I set up for anything out of the north wind, anything for a thermal, which means there's calm wind, and anything out of the west. So I actually shape the food plot accordingly. So I, I put the bulk of the food plot to the north side of this, and then on the south end of it, I didn't plant any food plot. It's all by design, but when you, when you look ahead and you plan this stuff, it really can work out in your favor for a lot of success in the future if you take your time and planning on exactly where you want to put your blinds and why you want to put them there. Okay, so since it's literally Friday night, it's uh, September 16th, Friday night, and I want to get on the beach before it gets too dark. I'm going to call this video segment here, but stay tuned to our channel as the next one will be the completion of this day, and we got a lot going on with land management and a lot of fun and stuff. So if you like it, please hit the like button, leave us a comment, and consider subscribing, and I'll see you on the next episode as we share all of our uh, land management adventures, living the dream, deer hunting, uh, machine projects, side gigs, and all kinds of country living adventures. So I hope to see you on the next video. Thank you and have a wonderful weekend. Thanks a lot.